She began to think that she should keep this haven for her very own. No nibbling fish, no running, rushing rays, just the sunlight and the sea and coral. So when Philly found her settled there, Coral's face grew pale, for in her heart she did not wish to share. That's not very nice. We should share. Then, close on Philly's tail came Manta, stirring up a cloud of sand and Coral's temper too. Filling up with white, hot anger, Coral cried, Enough! You've ruined everything, she shouted. I don't want you here. But there's room enough for all of us, said Philly as she shied away. Manta moved to side with her. We make our home here too. I make the reef, Coral countered. All you make is a mess. Her heated words broke over them in waves, driving Philly and Manta from the heart of the reef. Coral planted herself stubbornly back in place. But all that grew in the wake of her anger was a feeling of regret. No nibbling fish, no rushing rays, just the sunlight and the sea. Coral knew then that it was she, and she was alone, who had ruined everything, and that alone she could not set it right. Reaching out to Philly and Manta, Coral called, Please wait. I can make the reef, but I cannot make it a home without you. It takes all of us. Joining hands, they shared a smile. So it was that Coral... Billy and Manta returned to the heart of the reef. And in the sunlight, in the sea, three mermaids made their home. Together. That's so sweet. I hope you all enjoyed that. That was such a cute book. So what we're going to do next, we're going to do our little action, like movements. Can you flutter your arms like a fairy? Your hands like a fairy. Good job. Can you stand tall like a castle? Good job. Can you kneel down on the floor like a knot? Good job. Can you roll your arms like a carriage? Good job. Can you twirl in a circle like a princess? You twirl. Good job. Can you soar like a dragon in the sky? We're soaring. Good job. Can you hop around like a frog prince? Well, we're going to get down the floor and we're going to hop. Can you hop? Good job. Can you prance around like a unicorn? So we're going to prance. Can you prance around like a unicorn? We're just going to prance around in a circle. Good job. Can you wave a wand like a wizard? Wave a wand. Good job. Can you sprout real tall? So we're going to bend down and we're going to sprout real tall like a beanstalk. Good job. Now we're going to swim like a mermaid. We're just swimming. Just swimming. Good job. Now, can you stomp your feet like a giant? Stomp like a giant. Good 
job. God is so good with that. So our next little thing is called Mabel, a Mermaid Fable. This is a cute book. It's by Robot Watkins. What was weird about Mabel wasn't her mustache. Her dad had a mustache, her mom had a mustache, her big sisters had matching mustache, and even her baby brother had a teeny baby mustache. What was weird about Mabel was that she had no mustache at all. Mabel tried hiding her nose behind jaunty shells and by wearing seaweed falsies, but this only made her feel like a clown. Nudie branch! Mabel had no idea what a nudie branch was, but if she was the only one, she was going to hide. So she frittered away for who knows how long, hiding in holes along the ocean floor, until Mabel realized she was not alone. Who are you? she asked. I'm lucky, said the giant eye. Who are you? I'm Mabel. Why are you here? Mabel asked. Because I only have seven legs. That sure sounds like a lot of eight legs. I'm supposed to have eight legs, said Lucky. Oh, what can you do with eight legs that you can't do with seven, Mabel asked. Count to eight, said Lucky. I can teach you to count to eight, said Mabel. Mabel helped Lucky count all the way up to eight, to 88. And Lucky sort of taught Mabel how to juggle. That's great. Then they pretended to be king and queen of the corals. Nudie branches. Sorry, said Lucky. I kind of leak when I'm scared. That's okay, said Mabel. What's a nudie branch? Nudie branches are sea slugs, said Lucky. Oh, said Mabel. So that's why they're awful. They are awful, silly, said Lucky. Nudie branches are amazing. So cool, they're so amazing. Suddenly, Mabel realized everything she ever really needed was already right under her nose. I wonder what comes after 88. Let's find out. The end. Did you like that story? It's so cute. I love that story. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to, if you're a unicorn and you know, it's kind of like if you're happy and you know, clap your hands. So we're going to gallop around in a circle. So we're going to gallop. You can go up and down and just gallop, kind of hopping. So we're going to, if you're a unicorn and you know it, gallop around the room. We're just going to gallop. If you are a unicorn and you know it, gallop around the room. If you are a unicorn and you know it, then your horn will really show it. If you're a unicorn and you know it, gallop around the room. Just going to start. If you're a unicorn and you know it, shake your legs and shake your hair. Go swish, swish. Good job. If you're a unicorn and you know it, shake your mane. Swish, swish. If you're a unicorn and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're a unicorn and you know it, shake your mane. Swish, swish. If you're a unicorn and you know it, sneeze glitter. Can you sneeze glitter? You go, achoo! If you're a unicorn and you know it, can you sneeze glitter? Achoo! If you're a unicorn and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're a unicorn and you know it, can you sneeze glitter? Achoo! Good job. Okay, our next book is a unicorn. It is... Uni, the Unicorn, and the Dream Come True. And it's by Amy Krauss Rosenthal, and the pictures are by Bridget Berger. It had been raining and raining and raining in the land of unicorns. Which meant like there hadn't been any sunshine for what seemed like forever. Which meant there hadn't been any rainbows for what seemed like forever. Which meant there hadn't been any magic for what seemed like forever. Because remember, there are only three ways a unicorn can get their strength and magic. From the golden sun, from magnificent rainbows, and from the sparkle of believing. Luckily.
Hopefully, there is a bright ray of hope from one unicorn who believed that little girls were real. And this is why Uni, and only Uni, was as strong and magical as ever. But Uni was very concerned about all the other unicorns. Meanwhile, some far, far away, but not that far away, a little girl watched the rain from her window. Somehow, she knew she was desperately needed in the land of unicorns. She was smart that way. The more it poured, the more certain she was. The harder it rained, the harder Uni believed. And the longer it stormed, the more they longed to finally be together. All of a sudden, they both heard thunder. Clap, clap! And they both saw lightning. Zap, zap! They both closed their eyes tight and wished the same wish with all their might. Then everything went quiet and white. It's really you, the girl shouted. You're really real? Although Uni had never once doubted. They could have laughed and hunted for hours, but there was no time to waste. They ran quickly through the meadow. They stopped to help some forest creatures in need, and together they lifted spirits. the unicorns huddled under a large tree and the unicorns discovered what uni had known all along it's true you knew little girls are real believing and befriending each and every unicorn became once again sparkly strong and magical as for the endless rain uni alone hadn't been able to wash it away but together could the unicorns make such a wish come true? Do you think they could make a wish come true? We're gonna see, I hope so. Could they ever, after what seemed like forever, the rain stopped, the clouds parted, and the golden sun reappeared, Uni and the girl twirled and twirled. What they didn't know, but would marvel at soon enough was that the sun would be, bring not one but two extra magnificent rainbows. And since rainbows are the bridge between here and there, a double rainbow meant that not only could the little girl return home, but there was a place for one more. Of course, of course, of course, you know who she chose. She couldn't wait for her family and friends to finally meet Uni the Unicorn. And I hope y'all like that one. I love it. So our next little thing that we're going to do is our Little Mermaid Melody's Got Rhythm book. It's such a cute book. It's by Benedict Carbonelli. We have Melody. She's played in hide and seek with Skye and Miranda in the tall seaweed. She hides behind a rock and does not move at all. She suddenly hears a sweet tune. Where's that coming from? Wonders the mermaid. Melody follows the music to an old wreck. Through the porthole, she sees five horses playing the violin. It's so beautiful, Melody thinks in amazement. The little mermaid listens to them for a long time. Her friends, Raina and Skye, pop up, making her jump. Where have you been? We've been looking for you everywhere. What are you doing? Asked the mermaids. I'm listening to the seahorses play a tune so beautiful, so wonderful, answers Melody, pointing to the little mus musicians. Her friends don't agree. Classical music is not exactly their favorite. Come on, it's your turn to be it, said Marina. Melody joins her friends, sad to leave behind this beautiful, beautiful tune. The next day, Melody returns to the wreckage, but the seahorses are no longer there. Still, a smile quickly comes to her face when she sees an octopus playing the harp. It's even more wonderful. By accident, Melody opens the window and falls headfirst into the wreck. The octopus immediately stops playing. Don't hide. Do you like music, pretty mermaid? She asks gently. Oh, yes. I've never heard anything so beautiful, said Melody. The octopus invites Melody to play with him. What a discovery! The harp is a fabulous 
with instrument. Congratulations, you are very talented, said the octopus, smiling. Would you like to participate in our concert tomorrow night? The mermaid is so happy that she accepts without hesitation. Melody decides to surprise her friends. She arranges to meet them at the wreck the next morning. Sky and Marina wonder what Melody has in store for them. Melody is a bit nervous. As soon as the concert begins, she tries to do her best and plays with passion. Melody receives tremendous applause from everyone in the audience, and Sky and Marina are so proud of the musician friend. Even if her friends don't share her taste in music, Melody has listened to her heart. The Little Mermaid is a real music lover and will be a very great musician. Way to go, Melody! Did y'all like that story? It was so cute! Okay, so for our next little thing, you want to sit down in a chair? We're going to do... We're searching for a unicorn. So it's kind of like we're going on a bear hunt. Can you put your hand up above your eyes? I'm going to look around. Look around. We're going to search for a unicorn. Oh, looky. What is it? It's a burbling brook. Can you move your arms like water? That was my quarter. Good job. We can't go around it. We can't go under it. We've got to jump over it. So we're going to stand back up, okay? You ready? We're going to jump. Here we go. We're going to jump over. Here we go. Ready? We got to jump, 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 jump. Good job. Okay. Back to the road. We're going to come back. We're searching for a unicorn. Searching for a unicorn. Oh, looky. What is it? We got to see what it is. It's a golden meadow. We can't go over it. We can't go around it. We can't go through it. We got to go. We got to go over it. Here we go. We're going to switch. Can you switch your arms back and forth? Switch, switch, switch. Back and forth. Good job. So go through the meadow. We're back to the road. Here we go. Searching for a unicorn. We're going to look. Searching for a unicorn. Looking, looking. Look! What is it? Oh, it's a hidden waterfall. We can't go around it and we can't go over it. We've got to swim through it. Can you go swimming? We're going to splash, 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 swim through it. We're swimming through it. Good job. <sighs> Back on the road. Here we go again. Searching for a unicorn. Searching for a unicorn. Look, what is it? It's a dark grove of trees. We can't go around it. We can't go over it. We've got to go in it. So let's watch. Very quietly. Can you stand on your tippy toes for a moment? Very quietly. Move the branches out of the way. Do you see anything? she saw it. A carrot on the ground. It gave her such a great idea. She squealed and jumped around. She took that simple carrot and she tied it to her nose. Oh, I'll say that I'm a unicorn. It might just work. Who knows? Well, as she did it, a truck drove by. The driver rubbed his eyes. Good grief, is that a unicorn? He shrieked in a great surprise. As Selma watched the swerving truck, it very nearly hit her. Would you believe that that truck was filled with nice pink, pink glitter? Oh no. Oh, Selma, look 
looked amazing. She was a unicorn. I'm special now, she cried out loud, and so a star was born. All across the whole wide world, her fans would cheer her name. Thelma loved it, every bit the fame, the fame, the fame. Thelma was a superstar. Her dreams had all come true. But soon she found that so much fame was kind of tricky, too. You see, her fans were mad for her. They'd scream and cry and laugh. They'd chase her everywhere she went just to get her autograph. In fact, they'd chase her all day long. It never, ever stopped. They chased her while she exercised. They chased her while she shopped. Please don't chase me anymore, she asked a screaming crowd. We'll chase you all you want, they cried. We're fans, so it's loud. And some were not her fans at all. Some were really mean. Some just did the mean things that she had really ever seen. I don't like unicorns, I agree. It's kind of mean. So, one dark night, she felt quite sad. This famous little pony, she thought, I thought that I'd feel great, but all I feel is lonely. She's looking at poor Otis. And so with that, she changed her mind, this lonely unicorn. She cleaned off her sparkles, and she ditched her magic horn, and then she walked right past the crowd. They didn't even notice. She thought how nice it would be. to see her lovely Otis. And when he asked her about her trip beneath her favorite tree, she simply said, oh, it was fun. But I'd rather just be me. That's a good story. I'd rather just be me too. Okay, our last story that we want you to do for our unicorn mermaid party is our mermaid school. It's by Joanne Stewart Weasel. And then it's illustrated, so the pictures are by Juliana Swaney. Oh, it's such a cute book for mermaid school. I brush my hair, and I shine my tail. I cannot stop to play. It's time to leave for mermaid school. Today is my first day. When I arrive, there's no one here that I have met before. But I can make new friends at school. I'm always glad for more. A boy is hiding by the kelp. I think he's feeling shy. Hello, I'm Molly. What's your name? I'm Squirt, is his reply. Why are you hiding? I asked Squirt. There's no one here I know. Well, we can fix that in a flash. Let's go and say hello. Our teacher, Miss Marina, calls. Please line up in a queue and follow me inside our wreath and I will show you what to do. Your cubbies have your names on them. Your tail packs all go inside. If you forget to take them home, they'll float off with the tide. Miss Verena hands out seashells and we count them one by one. We add and then we take away until we're back to none. For art class, we use the shells again to make things we can wear. We string them into necklaces and I braid some in my hair. To memorize the alphabet, we sing the ABCs. Soon we'll know each other, each other, each letter sound and learn to read with ease. Our music teacher comes in next. Her name's Miss Lorelai. Her trumpet fish accompany our notes from low to high. And when they play a faster tune, her drum fish join the band. We swirl our tails and hand in hand, we dance across the sand. It's time for recess. Let's go play. We check out everything. Squirt builds a roll of sand castles. I ride the great kelp swing. We shoot up in a water spout and then we play hide and seek. When I was it, I found them all and no, I didn't peek. There's clam burgers for lunch today, along with seaweed pie, and frozen salt pops for dessert. There's nothing I don't try. We hurry back for circle time, and as our food digests, we play a game, we sing a song, and then comes the very best. Our teacher reads a story that she calls a fantasy of boys and girls who had no tails and can't breathe under the sea. Miss Marina Steak sticks a starfish by each name on her chart. She says, let's all sing the goodbye song before we must part. I can't believe it's time to go. How can the day be done? The hours here 
trip just flown by because mermaid school is fun. The tide comes in, the tide goes out, the mermaid school now ends. Tomorrow we will all be back to play with our new friends. Goodbye. Do y'all like this story? It's so cute. I like seeing the mermaid school. So for our mermaid party crafts that we have today, we have our mermaid bag that looks like this. And then we have coloring sheets on the inside that look like this. We have Ariel. Then you're going to build your own unicorn. So you're going to color this, cut it out, and then glue it together. Your own mermaid coloring papers. You will get a mermaid mask or a unicorn horn. And what you will do, it shows you how to roll it up. So you'll follow two over here to one. And it kind of rolls up like that. And then you can tuck these down and you'll have a unicorn horn. Then we have our craft. So our craft, you have popsicle sticks and these little stickies, the jewels. Then we have the triangle and two little circle objects for the end. And whenever you put that together, it's going to look like that. It's a mermaid's tail. You can use it as a bookmark, a fridge magnet, anything you want to do with that. I think some fun things you can do at home. You can make like a seashell bin with a shoe box. So you can make like a mermaid little seashell bin. Or you can make, let's see, ocean in a bottle. You just need water, some cooking oil, and some seashells and blue food coloring. And then, if you want to make a rainbow in the bottle for our unicorn, you just need a jar, some food coloring like blue or green or red, some blue dish soap, and rubbing alcohol. And then you'll shake it all up, and then it's just like a rainbow in the bottle. It kind of separates. It's really cool. And then you can make unicorn slime. I know slime's a big thing. still a big thing. And then the unicorn horn, that was another suggestion. You already have your unicorn horn, so you'll just make that and roll it up and then wear it. So I hope you all had fun, and I will see you all whenever we have, let's see. No, well, this is it. So I will see if you all come and pick up your certificates. We have some different little things to go with certificates, and we will contact you if you all have prizes. So thanks so much for watching.